I'm going to explain to you what Rho v Wade has five minutes, I hope. So Rho v Wade is a Supreme Court case. that uh, legalized abortion and effectively it started when a lady named Norma McCarvey in 1969 was pregnant with her third child and she lived in Texas and she didn't want to have the third child so she wanted an abortion and she thought that Texas legalized abortions in cases of rape or incest. So she told the police that she was raped and it was a lie. And she was hoping that she would get an abortion, but they wouldn't let her. So then uh, she sued the state of Texas in the district court. And they said it was unconstitutional due to right of privacy. And of course, the state of Texas appealed this decision and it went all the way to the Supreme Court in 1970. And the Supreme Court heard an oral argument and their ruling was that the right of privacy without government restrictions according to the Ninth Amendment and so the decision was the right of privacy whether it be founded in the 14th Amendment's concept of personal liberty and restrictions upon state action, for the Ninth Amendment's reservation of the rights to the people is broad enough to encompass a woman's decision whether or not to terminate her pregnancy. And this was a 7-2 decision. So it was a 7-2 decision that a woman had a right to an not effectively that a woman had a right to an abortion, but more like whether a, wo a woman had a right to privacy and having an abortion was part of that right. The court also looked at mootness because by the time the case happened, she already had the baby. So what's the point? It's not like the court could go back and order that she be given an abortion of the baby. So one of the things that Texas said is, well, what's the point of having a hearing about a pregnancy that's already been given birth to? It's not like she can get any relief from the court. But the court said that we're going to make... Because generally the court cannot rule on a decision that does not provide relief. Even if something is illegal or infringing on your rights, the court can't make a decision that can reverse it. Then the case is considered moot and the court won't rule on it. So the court made an exception to that rule and said it was capable of repetition. So by the time a woman had a pregnancy, by the time the case reached the court, it was already too late. So it was important that they make a decision. And one of the things the court did was um, they made, they divided a pregnancy into three trimesters is biologically so first trimester so first trimester no restrictions except 
require a physician. Second trimester. Sun regulations. They must be reasonable and protect the health of the mother. And then the third trimester, all abortions can be restricted. Now, obviously, except risk to mother. Now, obviously, state like California can has decided that they can allow abortions even in the third trimester, and that's up to the state. State can be more permissive than this structure if they want to be but they don't have to be. So one of the problems um, with Roe v. Wade now is that it wasn't exactly written to protect against, to, to give women rights to abortions. It was kind of written to give doctors the right to perform the abortions. And so it was written in a way that was poor and that's why there's a risk that it's going to be struck down, um, especially now that the court has been very uh, conservative the last couple of years. And so we've got a few new cases like Webster v. Reproductive and Planned Parenthood. V. Casey. And so now a lot of states have passed what we call trigger laws. And what trigger law is, is saying that as soon as Roe v. Wade is overturned by the court, these laws will automatically take effect and then abortion will become illegal. And obviously, Texas has the Senate Bill 8, which is very restrictive and has gone into effect already. And this is a source of a lot of controversy and frustration. If you have any questions, leave a comment.